Just today, Gert shared another substack that caught my attention. I'd just recently spoken about him and some of the work that he had done. But this bit of information today inspired me to try and do something that I have not tried before. And essentially what he shared was from his Voice of Science and Solidarity about the COVID-19 immune escape pandemic. And I'm going to just very quickly take you through what he is saying about this image. Essentially, I've come to the conclusion that we are facing a serious crisis, and it's what I call an immune collapse crisis. In the first wave of the pandemic, it was largely because the immune system was triggered by the virus in some people to develop a cytokine storm. This is going to be different. And what I've taken on the challenge of is trying to see if I can predict how it's going to present clinically. It's one thing to talk about the immunological aspects of it, but what does it mean? How does it present? Can it be easily recognized? And even if it is, can we do anything about it? That's going to be the challenge. And so with that in mind, I have put together, and this is, I'm going to do this in one week. I've already thought about the outline of this presentation already, but this is predicting the viral storm, that explosion. What does it look like? when the explosion occurs and the lava starts to flow. At the moment, where we are is we're feeling all the eruptions. But when it actually goes, what does it look like? Is it easily recognized? That's a very challenging thing to do in about a week. But I realize that I'm uniquely placed because I've been predicting this COVID storm for a long time. Spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism. The more I look at it, it's not as straightforward as autoimmune because everything is pointing to the fact that the immune system largely is going to collapse by that point. So we need all the tools that we can get. And as a reminder, also in the description is this very incredible book, Humming Heroes, Inside the Nose, Almost Nobody Knows. And it's purely about educating people on the science of nitric oxide in the science, in the sinuses, antiviral, antibacterial, beautiful story, explain some of the science, ideal for a child to be able to even read and understand. Please support our work. This is free at the link in the description. If you want to get the full book, that is also on Amazon. So let's get back quickly to what it was that Gert was saying and what caught my attention and what inspired me to try and put this together. What he's saying here is that he has gotten this image here, looking at models of the variants over the period of time from about the 28th of September 2024 to the 2nd of August 2025. So almost about a year, looking at a four-week period. And each of the colors represents a different variant. So like this teal color is KP 3.1.1. And the green is XEC. And this brownish purplish is KP3. And this one down here is KP2.3. And then you have a bunch of other variants there. And what Gert did is that he started to draw a line based on the timing for the new variants. And when he looked at this, he saw from August last year to now, this is where it started in terms of the timeline for new variants. Then it started to steeply change. So this means that the variants are now coming much more quickly. This is potentially where he thinks it's going to end up. And it's a matter of time before it almost becomes vertical. And what it means, I'll just show you what Gert is pointing out. This is interesting, but in my view, an alarming development. 
where initially everything progressed slowly, it is now taking less and less time for newly emerging Omicron clades to dominate in prevalence. In my view, it is only a matter of time before things go down at a right angle. What will the which phenotrophic um, phenotypic characteristics of the virus will be needed for this to happen? And essentially, what it's pointing out is that the virus seems to be accelerating the mutations. And what will then happen is that as each mutation is able to get beyond the immune system, especially in highly vaccinated regions you will then see them happening faster and faster instead of every you know six months then uh, four months then uh, three um two months then six weeks then four weeks and it's then it's coming to the point where the variants are occurring so quickly that the immune systems don't have time to cope with it this is pretty serious and as i said looking at that caused me to ask a different question. It's what you call risk mitigation. Now, some people are ignoring Gert and saying, well, they don't care. They don't think he's right. I understand that, but they also didn't think he was right when he said that we would face this kind of variant soup by doing mass vaccination across the population. He was right in 2021. What makes you think he's wrong now? What I think he was trying to predict was the timing. If there is one thing about health and systems is that you just never know when that volcano is going to erupt. But you can tell from the tremors, from the smoke, from the heat, that at some point this volcano is going to erupt. The question is, are you in the way of the lava? How do you protect the city behind? And believe me, ignoring the volcano is not one of the options. So my challenge is to imagine that Hivikron occurs, okay? Let's hope it doesn't, but imagine that it does. How will it present? Because you will have a cohort of the population that literally appears almost as if there is no immunity left. And that's what I'll be talking about is how does viral sepsis look in that situation? And in order to understand it, I had to start going back to think, okay, where else can we see something like that? HIV, when they've reached the AIDS phase, when they don't have any CD4, cells left and they start to get viral sepsis in some cases how does it present what do they look like what are the characteristics of the really sick patients because one thing is for certain with these patients is that they look okay and they suddenly get very unwell similarly what would happen in the context of chemotherapy because chemotherapy wipes out the immune system for a period of time is it a similar presentation? Is that how it will present in the context of this kind of viral sepsis? Those are the questions that I'll be asking. And then what will it mean in terms of the impact on health services? How do they cope? Because if this is correct, and we do get this Hivikron kind of picture where the var variants are produced so quickly and so many people are getting sick, how does that work when the system gets overwhelmed? These are the questions that are very relevant to the whole population. Because some people may think, well, it's those people who have a poor immune system anyway that is at risk. That is true to some extent. But it doesn't seem as though people who are younger, fitter, stronger would think, well, that's not relevant to me. It becomes relevant if you get sick or your loved one gets sick and there is no capacity in the hospital or there's no space on the ICU for people to have an operation where if you have a fall and break a limb and need surgery for it, the hospital is completely full of people who are struggling with these kinds of ailments. That's the concern. And the question that I will be asking 
in this presentation. And again, if you want to watch it, join me. And the link is in the description below. Predicting the viral storm. This is me now trying to take GERP's prediction of the Hivikron and trying to then put it in a clinical context. Really, what does it look like? And if it does happen, how do you triage? Because in a sense, that is going to be what you will have to do. You may be so overwhelmed with numbers that you can't fix everyone. Who do you select? How do you select them? What do you use to treat them? These are the kinds of questions that we have to th start thinking about in the context of where we are. Again, I'll mention the point. Some people disagree. Some people think the risk is low. I understand that. But what they can't ignore is the fact that the variants are coming faster and faster. And so therefore, as you would for any risk mitigation officer, if they were in a company and somebody told them that the fire exit door was blocked, they wouldn't go, well, there will never be a fire anyway, so I don't need to worry about it. No, you look at it, you address it, you think about it, you try and mitigate it just in case there is a fire. In the same way, if this does occur, there will be nothing you can do when it occurs if you have not done preparation beforehand to think about ways to mitigate. As I've always said, I keep hoping Gert is wrong. But the more that I look at his predictions, the more that I see what he's talking about, I think inevitably he's going to be right. And what do we do? So, final thought, remember, Take a look at Hubbing Heroes and uh, join us. It's free. You'll join our newsletter as well. And uh, you will be able to get, if you wanted, to buy the number one book at the time that was on Amazon. We look forward to you joining us in this journey. And last but not least, join us as I try and predict and understand what risk mitigation can be used if and when this occurs. I'd like to say have a great evening, but that's probably not the most appropriate term. But let's keep working on the science together. Thank you.